Hey everyone, welcome to the North American Challenger Series Summer 2 Finals, brought to you thanks in part to our friends at Coca-Cola. I'm David Freak Turley, and alongside me, required by Challenger Series Rule 73-12, is Aiden Zyrene Moon. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Thanks for the ruling there. Of course. Thankfully, it doesn't cover which side of the desk we sit on, because we swapped today. I know, it's a little awkward. I know, my right side feels warmer than normal, but you know what? I think we'll manage, guys. Today's matchup is between Team Coast and Curse Academy, and it's her first place here. Now, it's appropriate that this meeting takes place here on the LCS stage, because, well, eight out of the ten players are actually former LCS pros. Yeah, and starting on the blue side is Team Coast, who were an LCS team in the 2014 split, but were relegated to the Challenger Series when they fell to complexity in the Summer Promotion Tournament. But since then, they've revamped the roster and are 10-1 and one overall, and their impressive duo lane of Mash and Sheep are completely dominant the challenger scene, honestly, the way LMQ did in spring. Oh yeah, and Team Coast has already locked in the number one seed in the challenger playoffs. So today's matchup is more about bragging rights over the team responsible for their single loss way back in summer one. Little redemption here. See if they can do it. Of course, the team on the other side, though, is Curse Academy. Now, like Coast, this squad also regularly scrims LCS teams for practice, and all their members, except for Impactful, have played in the LCS before. Yeah, Jungler St. Vicious has been their lightning rod this season. When Saint does well, Curse Academy just wins off the back of that. And according to them, their talented bot lane of Impactful and Bunny Foo Foo is just as good as Team Coast's. We'll see if that ends up being the case here in this match. But for those of you who missed the series overall, here's a quick recap of the journey these teams made to get here today. Since claiming the Summer 1 title in a 2-0 sweep over Team Law Pro, Team Coast auto-qualified for Summer 2, sailed past the Nile Esports and Team 8 in similar fashion, going a perfect 4-0 in Summer 2. And after finishing in third in Summer 1, Curse Academy did drop a game to Wasabi Gaming in the quarterfinals, but won both their series so far. And yesterday, they clinched a first round bye in the playoffs with a little help from Team 8, who defeated Team Law Pro in the third place match. And that's because at the end of Summer 2, the teams with the top six scores will enter into the Challenger playoffs, and the top two will get to skip the first round entirely. The team Coast and Team Curse Academy have earned the top two scores regardless of today's result, guaranteeing them buys in the first round, where Team Law Pro will face Denial Esports and Team 8 will go up against Wasabi Gaming. That buy is huge because a loss in the first round of the playoffs means elimination and an end to the quest of facing an LCS team in the 2015 Spring Promotion Tournament. So even though there may not be playoff seedings up for grabs, these teams both want to win today, at least for practice. But don't take our word for it. Here's what the players had to say. Every match in the Challenger Series is important for us because we want to solidify ourselves as the number one Challenger team. We want to be on the LCS level already. There's actually a lot of former LCS players. You got Man Cloud, um, Bunny played for a little bit, and uh, Chrissy played for Velocity. This is like, I guess, like the old guard trying to like come back in or something. That's what it is. First time they took one game off us on online event. I don't think they will at the online event though. For our team goes, I think we have the best ball lane in the Challenger Series and an easily like LCS tier. When you watch Mash Me and Sheep play against the other Challenger teams, they tend to just absolutely dominate them. But I think our bot lane is really good too. We're definitely probably one of the strongest parts of each team and depending what way it swings could mean a lot in the game. It's really on them to prove that they can contend with us because we had a much harder path to get here and I think Team 8 is actually a stronger team than them. Right now, a lot of people believe that Coast is the best challenger team. This is a chance for us to kind of prove that we are the better team. Yeah, they thought that Coast had a harder route here and Team 8 was harder. They 2-0'd Team 8 previously. Yeah. Honestly, Coast are looking like the top dog in the Challenger Series, but things can always change by the end of it all if you prove yourself as the better team. Let's check out the starting lineups here. On the blue side, Team Coast, Rux in the top lane, Santorin in the jungle, Golden Glue in mid, Mash on AD carry, and Sheep on support. And on the red side for Curse Academy, top lane it's Chris, Jungle, Saint Vicious, middle Man Cloud, AD carry, Impactful, and support Bunny Foo Foo. And so we brought it up, and then they brought it up, so by the rule of threes, we are bound to bring it up one more time. The bottom lane is our featured matchup for this series. Yeah, I think we're going to bring it up like four or five times. On A game. The, I know. <laughs> <laughs> on the blue side with Team Coast is AD carry, Mash, and support Sheep, who have been crushing opponents all summer long with a 12.78 KDA. You heard Mash in the video say they consider themselves to be an LCS tier bot lane, and based on their performance this summer, it's really hard to doubt them on that claim. 
Yeah, that's true. They're very strong. But on the red side for Curse Academy, it's AD Carry Impactful and Support Bunny Fufu. In Coast 1 lost this summer, these two combined for 8 kills and 15 assists, nearly doubling the total by Mash and Sheep. So if Impactful and Bunny can outplay them one more time, Curse Academy will be in a good position to take this series if they can make that one happen. Yeah, and a big thing I also want to keep my eye on, instead of that bottom lane or alongside it, is the jungler, Santorin. Mm came over from EU, and when Coast got him on the roster, he's really just changed their entire style. He loves to bully you. He loves to find you in the jungle. And then on the flip side, St. Vicious had two really good Evelyn games with kind of Schrodinger pressure and the Evelyn tax where he could be anywhere. And then a Lee Sin game with great mechanics and performance. He can kind of step up his game and bring it, but Santorin is really consistent. So I want to watch that matchup very closely to see how that dictates how the game plays out. And we actually saw something similar in our third place match that we cast yesterday, where if your shot coming from ahead, it's a bit easier. If you're doing well individually, it, it takes some pressure off. We, for example, heard Bjergsen talk about calling for TSM, saying it hurts his individual play. They have to think about all these other things around the screen and all the other things with his team, and it's, he's got to, you know, split his attention apart. So if you are winning here, and if you're uh, Santorin here who, who calls for Team Coast, if he can get the ball rolling, have to worry less about his individual play, suddenly Coast can just kind of fire on all cylinders there. Yeah, and Coast, shot caller in the jungler, mm -hmm. and if you bully the other guy, it's definitely easy to call from ahead, like you said. Yeah. And then Curse Academy, same story. Yeah, it's a similar story. Uh, impactful is their shot caller. St. Vicious is kind of a secondary voice. Uh, I talked to him about 10 minutes ago, and St. said, uh, so yeah, Impactful normally calls, but if we're doing something really stupid, that's probably on me. Like, if we're doing like a <laughs> random two-man bear in 15 minutes, that was my call. And sometimes he doesn't have the smites to back up those calls either. Recently, he's been okay. Yeah, he's actually been okay. We did see him miss a couple previously. That's true. Well, it wouldn't be St. Vicious. We'd suspect him for a count string if it was anything else. But Evelyn oh. banned away from St. Vicious. The Cassidy banned from Golden Glue. The Lulu also removed away from Chris. And I want to see how these guys adapt to the new games. We haven't seen them in a little while. And uh, top lane matchups have changed since then. Maokai being a heavily contested one. Gragas big and, well, already banned away. Yeah, these bands have come out really quickly there, not letting St. Vicious on the Evelyn, which he had a great performance on, and then Maokai off the table from Rux, Gragas on the top lane from Chris, and just also banning out the Yasuo. You can't let Golden Glue get his hands on that champion because they just have too many contingencies on how to make it work in the late game. That's your Golden Glue, great assassin player, and a lot of synergy, though, already here with the Tristana pick grabbed regardless. St. Vicious has to look into his jungle pool with the Evelyn gone, decide if he wants something here. Well, the big thing here for me is Santorin loves Elise and Lee Sin. He's going to get at least one of them this game, and then that gives him the opportunity to go dual St. Vicious in the jungle. That's true. And the Elise comes through Lee Sin. I have heard him characterized as a good 1v1 against Elise, as far as matchups are concerned, so that could be nice and dandy here for Santorin. Yeah, if you ever land the Sonic Wave Resonating Strike on a Spiderling instead of her, sometimes the trade can go the opposite direction. True. But if she lands a Cocoon, she'll usually come out on top. But it's a back and forth. It really is. And of course, did you know, I'm sure you did, as a jungler player, you, as long as you have a Safeguard and then Iron Will on, you can spell Vamp by smiting a Spiderling. So, oh, yeah. Uh, a little bit extra combat purple, power. Though. Yeah, you can slow him down as well. It's useful. Uh, and as well as the AoE, of course, stealing for you. Santorin will get the Lee Sin. And the top lane, Nidalee, comes through, picked by Golden Glue for rocks. Coast getting a lot of very high priority champions, but keep in mind, Bunny Fufu does have that Thresh. Exactly. The Thresh here is top pick for Sheep. Sheep and Bunny Fufu both played against each other when they were in the LCS, and they love that pick. It was highly contested between them then, it's highly contested between them now, and Curse Academy gets it. But look at what comes out here for Curse Academy, though. They get the Corky to try to lane bully Trist in the lane. We'll look for early pressure here, but uh, Rise coming in. And I actually don't know if that's mid or top rise here. Both of them can play the champion. So back when we saw MASH before he was on Coast, mm -hmm. the team that he was on, I think it was Curse Academy at the time, whenever he was on a hyper carry, they would do really well. If he wasn't, they would fall flat. He's back on a hyper carry, playing to his strengths and his style, and it's up on him to Impactful to shut him down in the early game, in the mid game. But there's a lot of things here, because if Curse Academy scales and they get past that and keep Tristana down, the Rise is going to keep them right in the game. And Rux, I mean, Chris, we've seen him on that before, mm -hmm. and he's just destroyed. He absolutely has, and so it's a champion to keep in mind in this game is, can Centaurin pressure that with Rux here in the top lane? Is it going to be mid lane Rise and maybe an Aurelia versus Nidalee? There's a lot of options available as they keep hovering over champions. I don't know, my instinct is still... That, that's a mid lane rise for Man Cloud. Well, the last time we saw Man Cloud, the last two games, he played Ari back to back. Oh, that's yeah. That's what it's going to be for him here. Okay, so the option to hover whatever they wanted. I saw the Aurelia hover and I got excited. 
That wasn't the case, though. It is top lane rise for Chris up against this Nidalee of Rux. Mancloud is going to play even more Ari, and Golden Glue's got to make sure he stays safe against that Assassin mid laner. So every time Golden Glue has gone up against Mancloud, even back in the LCS when they would meet, uh, when they were on uh, XCG and Dignitas, mm -hmm. Man, uh, Golden Glue would always get the better of the trades. He'd come out on top in CS and in kills by the end of the game with a higher KDA. So is that going to be the story here tonight as well? Well, Coast come in as a favorite. So you got to expect that's going to trickle down to everybody on the roster where if you win team fights, your KDA just goes up regardless. And maybe the Lee Sin of Santorin can swift, uh, push that his way as well. But we got to see as they get into the game. As this match begins, let's check who you think will gonna, is going to win from home. According to lolesports.com, 80% of you say that Team Coast will take the series. And I think that is, I think, the most one-sided vote of the day. Yeah, I think so. At Coast, you know, there's a little bit of a non-surprise factor to that. Chris Academy is very popular with St. Vicious, and they're four LCS players, or mm -hmm. former. But Coast, they do have some star power here themselves with four yeah. LCS, former LCS members themselves. But they also took Summer Series 1, and they've been looking really strong. And a lot of teams in the bottom of the LCS right now have their eyes on Coast. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Coast are incredibly impressive. They are scary. As we talked about, these guys have been scrimming LCS teams a bit. That was something that um, teammates been doing, something that LMQ had been doing for a while before they came into the LCS. And you saw them dominate the Challenger Series and then go take right now first place in the season. Like This is definitely a path available to these teams if they can do well in the Spring Promo Tournament. And it's really just up to how well they gel as a group of players. These rosters have been undisturbed for a while, which is a good point for both teams, that they will have that shot calling, that communication down. And then it's, all right, well, how good are you at keeping up with your region's best? Yeah, if anything, these rosters have just been enhanced lately. Addition of Santorin. Great, great decision there by Absolutely. Coast. Rux put his name as all caps. It's Rux. He's pulling a Dade. <laughs> they both put the name in all caps. I don't know why, but they've done it. Mash has shortened his name. It used to be Don't Mash Me. Yeah, it was a mouthful. The mash is so much easier. Now it's just Mash Sheep in the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Nice little portmanteau there. <laughs> you can smash them together really easy. Mash Sheep! That's it. Uh-oh. Bunny oh, Fufu, though. Bunny. If he throws a random hook, there are five members in there, and he does... Hook catches Santorin. Bomb Javelin Pubble comes out. That was a lot of cues just pressed right there. These teams know each other so well. The last time they met, it was whichever team got a really early advantage, won that game. And then they went back and forth three games in that series. Mm -hmm. And now maybe Coast can slow it down and play maybe more their game. As favorites, you got to generally look for a less chaotic game. I feel like if you're supposed to win on paper. Yeah, but that's not really Santorin's style. Santorin yeah. likes to crush his enemy and go find them in the jungle. It's kind of harking back to the days where Meteos was like, if you're doing nothing, as a jungler. Uh oh, uh -oh. oh uh -oh. Rux! Rux Whoa. doing something as a top laner. That's running into the enemy team. He is trying to run away. Some damage still available, but likely to get out safe. Doesn't blow a flash. Yeah, it's big. It's a big thing there. He goes to the bush for some safety and gets out. But man, he's going to be forced to back. He might miss one minion, but that's about it. He should be OK. It actually lets him get another potion as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, so not the end of the world for him. He could actually choose to TP um, with that extra potion if he wanted to. But we'll see how that matchup ends up going. Curse Academy are going to uh, slink into this bottom lane. Are they going to show up late to show a fake leash? Looks like not the case here. Well, if you're fake leashing, usually you'll spend some mana as well, like maybe throw a Phosphorus Bomb into the darkness. Yeah. But he's going to want that to push, especially against this Tristana. All right, well, Coast will... Basically, both these teams can realize that the junglers both are on the top side of the map. Early Bubble's going to land, and Mash going to start pushing this lane up as well. I want to see how well Bunny Fufu can last it with his Relic Shield. Gets one. So far, so good for both teams. Yep. Mash actually doesn't have Explosive Shot right now. He has Rocket Jump. Interesting choice there. Sheep losing a lot of health, though. Great hook by Bunny Fufu. However, the push lead does go coast way, meaning they should get level 2 first and a bully advantage. You'll have to see, not, not starting with the Explosive Shot is actually kind of big, because you don't get that fast push down, and you also don't get the early harass. Oh, they may oh. or may not need it. We'll see Woo! what happens. And our first pause of the series is already here. It only took us two and a half minutes. Yep. Sometimes it happens, even when it's not, even when it's on land. Yeah, it's true. But you know, it wouldn't be a game in, with Nidalee without four paws. So uh, uh, why not? <laughs> why not? Gotta start them out early. It's, uh -huh. I gotta. This is what I miss about the Challenger series. There's no audience to applaud when I make horrible jokes. I know. You stop. Stop. You're just, they're, just, they're just encouraging you. It's a terrible idea. Next word that goes down. You guys know what to do, right? Yeah, yeah you do. Unfortunately, balls isn't here. Can we, you guys got to figure out which player it is that replaces Balls here for the name chance. Uh, it's up to you guys. I don't care who. 
It's just going to be balls <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I love that. Well, of course, we have started up into this game. We do have a pause quickly, and we haven't talked about the comps very much. We talked about players, their important champions, mm -hmm. the styles of the teams here. So you've got great assassination pressure here from the Ari of Mancloud. Yeah, you also have the pick potential of the Thresh on that team, especially mm -hmm. in Bunny Foo Foo's hands. So they can look for some picks late game, and Chris in the top lane has the rise. He's looking to scale up into that late game alongside what Mancloud's going to be bringing with the assassination. So they have teamfight prowess, some assassination and pick. They aren't really AoE Womble Combo oriented at all. And mm -hmm. then they have St. Vicious on Elise for those early game picks as well. So it's really just can we force things early and then transition that late, but make it picks, not a full-on team fight. That's true. And that's a weird sort of hybrid between uh, like Rise wants to do these all-in sort of brawls. The AoE is really strong. The repeated machine gun spells are great. But yeah, otherwise you have this really big fallback pattern of these long-range skill shot uh, CCs that'll set up kills for you. So uh, a couple of different ways that I guess Curse Academy can go with this one. Coast, meanwhile, very team fight focused. Tristana, uh, there's a Ziggs in there as well. And they're hoping basically to keep Rise out of the fights with Split Push Nidalee. Yeah. I feel like the fact that Coast can sort of force more things outside of picks, to be fair, mm -hmm. um, is a lead for Coast. So it's like, hey, Mancloud and Bunny, can you pick random people off? Because otherwise, I feel like Coast can just play their game plan. Exactly. Coast, if they go and they show up at the Dragon first, they're like, oh, we'll just set up some zone control with mm -hmm. Ziggs, and then they'll be good to go. Rux will continue to split push. And he, that's what he loves to do. Even when we see him on things like Aatrox or Renekton, he's always split pushing. And hey, Trinity Force is actually a real buy on this champion. Of course it is. <laughs> it's a wonderful lot on every champion. How dare you? Ah. Unfortunately, both junglers put Smite on F, though, so I can't really whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, vouch for Santorin or St. Vicious here. See, as, as a real jungler, it does belong on F. Mm. Kobe agrees. Okay, Kobe, Kobe I'll respect. And, and Dash agrees. Dash, I don't respect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I respect Dash. It's okay. Just sometimes people are wrong occasionally. It's just how it works in life. All right. St. Vicious looking for this bottom lane. The bubble's gonna land though. It does not bait Coast in. They land CC, but don't follow. Oh, the Fuck, hook. it's cheap. Uh oh, that is not good. He is trying to run away. Somebody he'll already burn the flash as well. And there is first blood. Bunny Foo Foo claims it before four minutes. That is exactly what Curse Academy want coming into this game. They said that that bottom lane is so powerful from Coast and that theirs is just as good. So Saint is gonna camp it early and get it ahead so they can transition into that late game. And that is exactly the plan now for Curse Academy, man. Corky, the early game lane bully Thresh, always has a chance to make a play. And Saint is not done, though. He looks for Golden Glue. The flash. Nope. Cocoon went from behind him. I think he flashed. I've not seen the interaction before. I think he flashed after Cocoon came out. Huh. He tried to cocoon himself. Did not stun himself, so it's all right. It's like that new Ezreal W. Yeah, so you ready for this one? Boo! Oh, oh no, it does. What? It I didn't know it worked that way. <laughs> Apparently it does not look um, like Charm does. I yep, was unaware uh, of that. That's a, that's a pause after that. <laughs> Why not? I, I don't know if it's for that necessarily, but certainly it got ourselves a pause here. Okay, so the picks have happened. Curse Academy has shown that Bunny Fufu's Thresh is freaking spot on. I actually, um, when I went down and I talked to Curse Academy, uh, they were jokingly saying they hadn't done picks and bans yet. They had, of course, of but course, I, yeah. they, they trolled me at first. I was like, yeah, we don't know what we're, what we're really going for. And I sort of speculated, like, I really wonder at what point in this series you guys rush first pick Thresh? Because I feel like both your supports are these ridiculously god-tier Thresh players where, like, most teams don't first pick Thresh. These two teams, I feel like, could. Yeah. Most, of course, went for the for the Tristana, and I understand that pick to set up Mash here, but you saw a first round, first pick for Curse Academy, Bunny Fufu Thresh, already first blood. Yeah, exactly. Right off the bat, first blood in that lane, and there's so much emphasis on these bottom lanes here coming into this game. You have to think, the Nami pick into that, a mm -hmm. little questionable. Morgana, Bomb, yeah. they have great showings on these other champions, but Nami's very, very vulnerable. Fish on a hook. Well, and, and yeah, it's true that like you've got this sort of hard-countered lore synergy where Fish on a hook, you know, it's easy to bait them, and uh, it just makes so much sense. I mean, this is your, your joke. I, I'm just, I, I set I'm just building off it. of it. I'm just, I'm just building off of it. This is all his. Um, but uh, it's interesting because... You you have a lot of really interesting games to play in champs, like in the game itself, because Nami is a great lane bully. She lanes really well. You've got the sustain, you've got CC potential, you've got gank setup, all these good things. And if you're the air quotes better team, you kind of want to play these bully lanes. You don't want to be like, oh, we'll just let you get a laning phase for free, even though we're better players. It still opens you up to Bunny Fufu making plays. But I can't condemn Sheep for saying, I'm going to play an aggressive laner here. Yeah, but the thing is, is that he's playing it into an early game team. 
True. And he, Santorin has his eyes on other lanes. He's up in that top lane right now and actually making it back for himself. Ha he, I think he's probably looking for St. Vicious most of the time. That is one thing that Legion is good at, is running in and finding the enemy jungler. Want to see how the items pan out here. Longsword versus Boots. Both these guys got wards, though. Yeah, he counter jungled and he put a ward down near the wraiths. He's waiting to find Saint, waiting to get an advantage over him, and then push it as Lee Sin. And Golden Blue's burning his uh, escapes just to push the wave. I think he wants to back pretty soon for a chalice there. Double ring plus boots for Man Cloud. That could be the setup of a DFG start. I don't typically see double ring unless you're skipping chalice. Yeah, the mono regen will help you out on your on your way to that DFG as opposed to the chalice. CDR is not a problem. You know, actually. Uh, some players really plan for the Deathfire Grass build. I know Shifter is a player who will run Mana Regen Seals if he goes DFG. Because he's skipping Chalice there. But now the push in towards Dragon. There is a ward right on top. Santorin does a have a ward to hop out if he wants to go for the play. Funny Fufu pulled so far back, though. Sheep, they're trying to converge on this. It's three on four. More first coming hooked. down. The Mash gets hooked in. There comes the fight picked up cleanly by St. Vicious. And the land oh, does got not get him out in time. Mash claims the kill after the Q from Rux. That has one kill trade for a dragon, though, still better for Curse Academy. Killed him while he was in the air. Yep. Such a great pickup there. And that's exactly what they needed in that bottom lane, getting the kill on the Tristana. Yes, and suddenly that's going to make life much easier, unfortunately, for Curse Academy. Their kill had gone on the support, so early sight stone is nice, but it is not necessarily Snowball Corky. And this looked like Santorin wanted to get in, and then boom. Rux actually swiped him as he, yep. as he was passing. It was a close Take line. Down. It's a 230 damage takedown into a single auto attack of Tristana. And this early on in the game, 230 damage is a lot. It's a significant chunk of the health bar. It's a fifth of Golden Blues right now. Yep. Look at that. It's about that much. There you go. Some pain. Man Cloud, though, going to be pretty safe in the wave clearing. So he's using a recall back after this wave. And it's the first recall back for Chris here. Tier, probably an easy buy for him. He did not TP into that fight, by the way. So had a little bit of free time in the lane. Saint's going to just easily walk in and hold the lane himself, Rux. Gonna recall back. Catalyst and Tear, though, done for Chris very early on. He has not been held down in this lane. And Nidalee, we know, as usually an early game bully. I don't know how late game Nidalee vs. Rise goes 1v1. We're gonna have to find out. It's gonna happen eventually in this game, unless Curse Academy ends it very early. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. Oh, they're up 700 gold right now. It's not the biggest margin, but oh. we'll see what else they can control. Blue buff goes to Golden Glue. I actually like this by Rux. He went back and he bought himself a Chalice. Yeah. So he has Mono Regen now, so he has a little bit of that poke sustain. He also has the Magic Resist against Chris, who just came yeah. back with a lot of damage on Rise. Mm -hmm. The Mono will convert straight into that form. I do like that adaptation here, actually. I think it's a really smart choice. I remember... Uh, it's fun, actually, some of the top lane builds as they pan out. I remember talking to uh, Westrice about top lane builds back when Rumble was popular. And he's like, actually, Malphite's good against Rumble. You just build a Chalice first, and you just Q him on cooldown. And the MR makes you stay alive. Rux goes in on Chris, though. Damage traded back and forth. And Santorin. And he's baiting in Santorin. In Hops in, kicks into the wall, lands the Q. More damage. There's the flash burned away. And oh, they have to chase the him into the turret. Rux wants to go for this one. The takedown works, and a kill goes into the top lane for Rux. You land that spear, it resets your cougar, and he just jumps straight in for the kill. Santorin setting up the top lane. Absolutely beautiful. Burns the kick. And no summoners even lost by Coast for that. So a kill and the summoner lost. Chris does not have TP. He's going to miss multiple waves now top lane. And Rux is set up to completely crush this 1v1. That's really what he's set up for in the buy. Because that delays his Trinity Force. He's looking to just survive, get more rotations on his spells. The fact that Santorin helped him out basically almost gave him a free chalice for a bit because he has a kill and an assist. Ooh, wow, look at the damage from Man Cloud though. That is before any real ability power comes in. That's no death by our grasp just yet. Golden Glue, got to be careful here. Yeah, when you flash into the end of that linear skill shot, you're still going to eat both parts of it. Yes, you are. And it was uh, rather painful there. Golden Glue is going to do what he can to hold on to this lane. He is still 10 CS up. He had roamed down to the dragon earlier, but hey, Man Cloud, I think is very empowered to make plays here though. Big thing about this, I talked about how every time they've matched up, Golden Glue gets the better. He's up in CS right now, and he's chugged his potions. He's actually in a pretty good place HP-wise again, but his flash is down. No ulti from Man Cloud, ulti from Golden Glue. See what happens here? Yeah, I feel like Man Cloud's playmaking is down for a little bit until that Spirit Rush does come back, but he'll have Ignite when it does. Speaking of playmaking, Santorin has his eyes near that bottom lane. His red is up, and he hasn't taken it just yet. He might go for that and then make a loop around. 
He's going to look at that a little bit. St. Vicious, though, gets some ward coverage into the jungle, and Curse Academy making the first Ooh. move. Sweeper used. They're going to run right in towards this red buff here. Oh, they can collapse on this. The ultimate from Golden Glue was used already. They know about this. The Q to the Vicious with a kick out of Magma. Oh! Knocks them safe. There's a whole bunch of explosions in Curse Academy. Suddenly, he realized oh! they stepped onto a ward. A great lantern oh, does not that. save St. Vicious. The Ignite of Sheep claims the kill. And Coast find two kills in their own jungle. The collapse, the warding of their own jungle was perfect there by Coast to set up that two for zero. And it was absolutely beautiful. You saw one ward get swept, but there was already a defensive ward on the red buff itself. I don't know who chooses that, but it was a great choice there. Rux, you can see trading against Chris, but Chris already running out of mana. Uh, Rux out sustaining the mana bar here, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. When you have the Chalice, your mana regen is increased. You can take a lot of beating because you're maxing Primal Fury first most of the time. Mm-hmm. You know what that search of health he's got? Search. Yep, boom. Search of health he's getting is keeping him in a decent spot. Watch that again. Ooh. This is the Q, but this ward hop kick is beautiful. Hits both of them and just deals the damage across. It's the lantern out, but the ignite. Oh! Dead spider. If you ever have a spider problem, just burn him. Yeah. Bring sheep. Bring a fish. <laughs> Why not? Going well. Actually, bot lane, though, very low CS. Mash, only 78 minions at 11 and a half minutes. The lane itself is going incredibly well for Impactful. Mash kind of went greedy style and bought an early uh, Avarice Blade. I don't think the 20 CS is worth that extra gold, though. It's just that he is getting some kills, so uh, Mash isn't too far behind, thanks to his team. Yeah, the Avarice Blade, a little greedy there. He's going to be down about 20 CS in this bot lane, but that's a little bit to be expected in this mid-game hump here, because Corky has that edge. That's true. It is a matchup lead, and it's one that Curse Academy are pushing forward. Oh, he just bought the static shift straight out now, yeah. so he's looking to farm and push the waves onto the Corky as fast as possible. There we go, guys. Yes, wards are dying. I know some of you guys on the internet hate me for uh, cheering you guys on for this, but it's worth it because y'all are wonderful here. Oh. If that's the only thing people on the internet are hating you for, hey, you're lucky. Oh, here comes Rux. Well, here we go. The fight could begin. Santorin does have the kick available. They've been freaking awesome so far this game. Yeah! <laughs> More words dying. And here we go. Mancloud looking back and forth. Has the ulti. Ziggs trying to zone out the team. Chris Academy really want in, though. They've got some ward coverage. Chris hasn't TP'd in yet. There it goes. Oh, the Mega Inferno Bomb and the Final Wave. drops from low. St. Vicious steals away the dragon. And Rux now getting hooked in. The fight has begun. Santorin rather low, but kills St. Vicious anyway. One could put up for Ghost Dragon goes to Ghost Academy. No miss smite there. That puts them back in the game, and they come out net positive on that. Unless Ghost can do something with the number lead right here. They've already taken down two turrets this game, and maybe they can get some more health bars a little bit low. Missing some multis as well. They hit some item spikes here too, because the static shift was just completed. Why not just force an objective? go for the Dragon. They had their back timers completely right on that, mm -hmm. and they come out on top with it. So beautiful stuff there by St. Vicious and Co. And that is going to look nice. Even though his scoreline is 0-3-1, and one, you still got to commend him for his objective control so far. That's been good. Sightstone comes out early for St. He wants the ward control here, and Vision is going to be the name of the game here for Curse Academy. If they can turn some kills with that Vision, so much the better. And it's a stable jungle route now for St. for now. So when we talked about the junglers at the start and keeping eyes on them, both junglers have 100% kill participation. Santorin is 1-0-4. Out of the five kills, he's had a say in all of them. He's been just owning this map from top to bottom, influencing every lane and getting them ahead. And now he can focus on objectives and know that they will most likely win the fights just because they have more experience and more levels. They just have to find them. Well, and right now, Coach are doing a pretty good job of, of finding kills so far. They hold up. Almost a 2,000 gold lead here, unfortunately, for Saint. The only jungle buff, or sorry, the only gank we've seen him really get was that first blood bot lane. So since four minutes, uh, Curse Academy have not found any kills. It's been 10 minutes since they've scored anything. Yeah, it's kind of been a little stally game here in this mid portion, but that's not what Curse Academy wants. They have that, like, four of their members are really good in the early mid game and have edges over Coast. Coast has Tristana. They have Ziggs. It's really hard to siege against them. They have a split pusher at the same time. If any of their lanes get ahead, it's really hard to come back. That's true. That's going to be the difficulty then. Coast. 
They want to get the team fights in, and so far, the fights themselves have gone well. It's just the smites that have been good for Saint. So we're back into the two on twos and the one on ones. And I feel like we're going to start seeing small leads come in now for Coast. Only 15 to 10 CS down now in the bot lane. Oh, this attacker will try to wave clear. Both junglers present in the bottom lane. Santorin looping around. They see him. Oh, puts a ward down, sees Saint as well. But he does not have a sweeper up just yet, and this turret under a little bit of pressure here. There's a lot of pushing power here with the static shiv on Nash. Yeah, they're just crushing these guys under the turret. Rux wants in onto Chris, lands the javelin, jumps on in, half HP already on Rise. The answer back does some damage, but Rux can heal it back up. So that is just still health going down. They're gonna go in on for Mash. The play does not come in uh, until oh, the before he rocket jumps away. The flash on in, Impactful is there. Oh, so rocket low. lands, the hook is dodged by Mash, but he can't get away from the last missile barrage. Impactful does claim the kill. Another great hook from Bunny Fufu. Both kills this game have happened because of hooks from Bunny Fufu. Really amazing All player, you, you, you don't give him Thresh. It's pretty really much what can. it comes down to you. I mean, you can give it to him, but that if happens. you want that to happen. So I look by Bunny, he tries to save the play. I think he casts it right there. Uh, and Mash is trying to wait till he rocket jumped afterwards, but just a good change from here. Bunny actually flashed there to extend the range of the Lantern to pull Impactful even closer at the end. I think that guaranteed the kill. I think they wouldn't have gotten it without that flash. Yeah, because Mash flashed afterwards mm -hmm. too. So they went support flash for AD carry flash. That's fairly worth it. Support flashes tend to be shorter. Uh, you can see Impactful, or sorry, Bunny Fufu. By virtue of having biscuits, he did go deep enough utility for the summoner spell cooldowns. So 30 seconds less than his flash compared to Mash. But Rux is having, honestly, a field day here in the top lane. Saint easily grabs away the camp for himself. And top lane is actually under fire. Look at that with the jungle showing up. Going to trade out of turrets, actually. Top lane for bottom lane. Rux wants to defend, but it's 1v2 still. Saint causing pressure, but here comes Golden Glue to the top lane. He throws his Mega Inferno Bomb for oh. Wave Clear. They're gonna actually save the turret to take it back. I thought Curse Academy could trade, but Rise, such a slow turret pusher, gets no headway there. MacLeod kills a ward, but otherwise not a very big deal. Lantern gets him out. Doesn't even want it. Oh, he's gonna want it soon. There's a charm. There's oh, he's jump over. On him. Oh! oh, what a play! And now in comes Mash, though. Can he do the damage? MacLeod forced to ult to get away. No kill, but an ulti down. They get MacLeod so low they can start pushing up this mid lane because it'll be a four on four. An impactful zoned out. Oh, okay, good Valkyrie over the wall, but can they wave clear enough in time? Bombs coming out, damage there as well. Sheep is in the mix. There do seem to be enough reinforcements. MacLeod healing up, and Rux goes back top lane. Yeah, they pulled Chris to mid lane, and Rux was still sitting top. So it was a four on four with Rux still being up, but in the top lane, not a presence in that fighter push. But this Triforce is done now, which means that Rux should have an even better time trying to bully Chris around. Chris does have his Sork Shoes done. The Rod of Age is in there as well. He is powering up in damage as much as possible. But I've yet to see Rux lose a fight to him. But also speaking of item power spikes here. Ooh. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. A little bit. But look at that wave through though. Rise gets to basically full heal and kill a bunch of minions off a of spell rotation. It just depends if Rux can actually get in and deal damage here. Dragon up in seven seconds. Curse Academy in the right place for it. They want to force a pick on this because Man Cloud just completed his DFG. Yeah. Blue Elixir, too. He's ready for this. He bought those temporary combat stats. If he lands a charm, he can pick somebody off. But Coast, they aren't grouped up. I mean, they are grouped up, so it's really hard to pick somebody off. And there's the TP and the flank from Chris. They spot it. They're trying to run. Tidal Wave could disengage, but they just go in towards the rise. The jump in for Santor and forces the flash away. Look at that by Coast. There's a knockback. Oh, and Golden. Golden Glue just goes down, though, after burning all of his spells. But Saint is low. He will go down one for one. But here comes Rise. Mash and Sheep lose a lot of health, and Santorin is going to follow suit. Two for one to Curse Academy. So much soaking there by Chris, and the hook from Bunny Fufu onto Sheep. Golden Glue gets just decimated in the middle of the fight, courtesy of Man Cloud and Company. And now it's mid lane under pressure by Curse Academy. Rux did not have anything to do up there. They lost the fight, and it will be an outer turret going down. Maybe they can retreat to Dragon afterwards. A great by Curse Academy. Playing to their win conditions, they end up getting two kills and a middle turret for them. They're about to go equal in gold here if they get this dragon. And that's going to be a great thing then. Curse Academy only down 900. They'll get a lead off this heck, but Coast. Looks like they want to stop this one. No teleport up for Rux and low health. Pink Ward comes down and Sheep says, oh, hi. Oh! Well, 
It's still St. Vicious, guys. Ruck steals away <laughs> with an 80 Nidalee Javelin. That was beautiful. Wow. You smile on Ruck's face there after that. Yep. Oh. To be fair, they're one on one now. Saint got a steal, Saint got one stolen. Both these teams taking their own objectives away from each other. But that would have put Curse Academy ahead in gold. That yeah, that's exactly what they wanted. But Coast, man. It's no wonder he capitalized his name. Because every time we're going to say it, he's going to be like, Rux, <laughs> what did he do? Rux still hype drag. every game, because why not? Death Cap coming soon for Golden Gloom, meaning Coast going to get even more explosive soon. But man, this game is much closer. To be fair, Saint wasn't at the Dragon Fight. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, you're the one who I said. really can't. I can't like, blame Saint. I apologize, <laughs> guys. I just assumed. I was wrong. You're like, St. Vicious is still St. Vicious. And I'm like, ah. That wasn't wrong. <laughs> I just, it's no longer a diss. No, he's no longer St. Vicious. That's not true. Pope Vicious. Why not? I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's getting worse throughout the day. I'm sorry, guys. Team Coast. <laughs> but I do want to talk about the fact, though, after correcting myself, that we expect the Coast to come in as heavy favorites. They 2 won Curse Academy last time. 10-1 overall record. Much, much closer game here. Curse Academy, I think, have been steadily improving as a team. We heard Coast talk about the fact that, oh yeah, we think Team 8's better than Curse Academy. We thought our road was so hard coming in. They 2 0 Team 8 pretty easily. Curse Academy giving them a real run for their money. 1,000 gold difference, 21 minutes in. This is a good Curse Academy team. Yeah, and a lot of this is going to stem later on from Chris and ManCloud with those scaling champions and who they can get to because their flank looked really good coming into that Dragon Pit. Because I talked about it, they don't want a 5 on 5 uh -oh. fight, but look uh -oh. at this, St. Vicious really alone right now, but he's got a teammate around, doesn't click the landman in time. Golden Lugus with the ultimate, impactful force to run away. Nice pick by Coast. It squashed in transit there, he barely clicked it, and it put him across the Mega Inferno Bomb still. So Coast getting a little bit more breathing room here. I mean, they're the team with the lead, but Ooh. they haven't been able to actually find good team fights. When they showed up for Dragon, I thought, great, that's what your comp wants to do. Get in the 5v5, but the flank from Chris, that in the moment shot by Curse Academy to split the team up, was so darn good there. That gives me a lot of hope for Curse Academy with this lineup here. With their decision making, Rux wants to get around behind Chris there and make a play, but Bunny Fufu holding Mancloud alive. Red buff on. He's got red, he's gonna keep slowing him. Javelin Ooh. misses though, he expected the juke. And Chris just slowly saunters away. St. Vicious, 0 and 5. He's 5 out of the 7 kills that Coast has. He's just getting countered. His ganks are just being seen ahead of time by Santorin. Yeah. And when he's present in these team fights, he's picked off first. He's very squishy. Yeah, he's had, I guess, a, an inconsistent summer then, because we've seen some oh, great games and bad ones, but there's Saint trying to get away from Rox. Rox very low on health, force went away. Bubble's going to miss. Saint, Match. though, low on health. The Q won't quite land from Santor, and Coast are set up to siege this turret, though. Q comes out. Can they do it? Can they continue to push on? They're not going to have Saint Vicious in this fight here from Curse Academy. Coast has some pushing power, but the rest of Curse Academy is there. Keep in mind, Coast do have two healers on the team. Rux and Sheep have both mass, um, maxed their heals by now, so there's a lot of uh, sustain available for a siege here. Not to mention that Ziggs and Trist are probably the two best in role for turret killing. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's actually a lot that Coast can do the more I look at this game. Set up for an easy 1-4. Rux has been beating up Chris all game, still. I feel like if Coast can just get into that one controlled environment where they just control all the variables, that's a done deal. Chris Academy keep throwing a wrench in the works, right? Looking for picks all the time. That's part of why Zane's getting picked out so much, is he's looking for all these plays. They're just not always there. Yeah, he's looking for the opportunity, and he's kind of forcing it happen sometimes, and it really isn't coming up big for him. Granted, he ha does have three assists, and he's set up some of his teammates, but this vision that he's getting for his team is something that is it worth it. Well, it's going it to spot be. a lot of the team. This is probably a St. Vicious call right here. Guys, let's randomly three-man the uh, the Baron. Sheep is going to walk in and say, hold on a second, guys. Guys, guys, oh. they're on Baron. Guys. And Curse Academy got to back out. Wow. Good instincts there. Yeah. Because Curse Academy with that ward that St. Vicious had placed previously that ended up costing him his life, mm -hmm. saw two members of Coast back. So he was calling for the Baron, but Sheep with a little bit of uh, game sense. Saw it coming. It's really good by him, man. Making it all happen. 1,500 gold keeps Coast ahead thanks to not losing Baron here. Rux 
Kind of looking to be the assassin on the wings right here. Trinity Force done. Going tanky though from here. He is not balls. No Infinity Edge for the Nidalee. It actually worked out pretty well for him. Feel that. Blue buff attempt. Oop. Looks like that's going to go to Golden Glue, so good timing on the satchel. And the uh, Bouncing Bomb to make that happen. Oh, Santorin. Looking for a play, didn't find it. Looking for the move there. Plenty of ward coverage, though, for Curse Academy. These guys have walked through a lot of vision to get where they are. Rux does clear the pink ward away. But he has been yet to pressure turrets much by himself. Only the outer turret line is gone for Coast. That split push just isn't turning into much. Just kind of treading water. Wards go down, but even more wards are there from Curse Academy. I mean, double sight stone is a lot of wards. Yeah, they have a lot of control on this map. Make sure they can make the safe plays and get the picks. You need vision as a pick composition. And they got in on that, that dragon pit first. So now they're going to get poked. Now yeah, Chris is in. Mash is pushing the mid lane there. Infinity Edge is done on the guy. Ooh, Saint so, is half HP. Yeah, that is a lot of poke that has come out, even though Chris Academy have the long range skill shot pick potential. The long range skill shot damage just is landing from Team Coast. They claim this easily there, and there you go. Coast now up closer to 3,000 in this one. Yeah, all those sweepers just denying vision, getting themselves in on the Dragon Pit after they poked Curse Academy off it, and they're rotating. Ooh. And they actually have everybody in this bot lane. Well, Chris was forced to ulti to get away from that gank right there. You saw the bubble go right behind his feet. And it's going to be a turret taking a lot of pain right here. Good damage from Golden Glue. Here comes Ash as well. Turret, two hits from dead. There it goes. Wow, so that rotation there right after getting the dragon was perfect by Coast. Curse Academy went off to the left, and St. Vicious still had to back at that time. Yeah. So there was no response. So Curse Academy forced to play even more defensive now as they wait a bit longer in this game. 4,000 gold now putting Coast ahead. Pretty recent change of events there. But Curse Academy still playing for the late game, still trying to power up on Rise. Chris picked up Distortion Enchant on his boots just recently to have more split pushing power potentially. Yeah, all across the board, everybody's pretty even in terms of CS. It's just these kills and who they land on, as well as that dragon control that's really been the deciding factor in this game. Yeah. Man Cloud, he can still turn it around with the DFG. Impactful is also 3 0 and 2 right now as Corky. So he's hitting these spikes for himself where he's about to get himself an infinity edge on top of his training force. Yeah, the problem is right now that he's behind Mash in damage. Now, there's not much for Coast to team fight for. They've been reluctant to siege turrets, which. I don't know if they need to be, to be honest. They've got better items right now. Rux, again, can keep pushing around Chris. I suppose they might just be afraid of uh, the teleport flanks. Chris has shown that's a way to win a fight before, but... And still, Coast playing a fairly slow style, to be honest. If they get the damage, they make moves, but until then, they're pretty afraid. Saint backs off, Man Cloud there to cover. Has chucked his blue elixir by now. Rocks right. looking for the move. Javelin won't land. Chris has burned the ulti to run faster away. Rux is just bullying around Chris in the top lane. I don't know how long that'll last, though, because Ryze gets pretty tanky, and he has machine gun, short cooldown, high damage spells. And he's only going to get tankier and only going to deal more and more damage over time. Saint wants to make the play. Hook's not quite going to land. Dodged by Santorin. And Coz look to be starting to play around the Baron Pit a little bit. Chris Academy has been the team that's held Baron control mostly, but they have not been able to take it for themselves. Not a lot of wards in the inventory, though. I would expect right now a team to recall, buy four pinks, and try to get controller of something. Not the case just yet. You know, being up here and hearing everybody cheer every time a ward dies really makes me realize how many wards are being killed this game. Yeah, a lot. It's helped me keep count. I'm just like, wow, that's a lot of wards. The division game back and forth between these two teams and where it's located mm -hmm. is really key. The fact they just went to Baron and swept it out, they can now start making plays on that side of the map. That's true. So you said you were getting help keeping count. How many wards is it? Uh, 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 five plus six plus five plus two plus nine. Oh, nine. Sorry, I'm cheating. I'm looking at the, the sweeper lens. Yeah, <laughs> who's got nine? Is that Mancloud? Yeah, Mancloud has swept nine wards this game. That doesn't even count pinks. Yeah, that doesn't. That's just what he's gotten with his sweeping lens. Most people are averaging around five. That's just how key and how early they got these sweepers. I'm gonna say forty. Forty wards have given their lives this game. Did somebody just tell you? In your no, I actually was told we can't actually get live ward kill cats. Oh. Otherwise, I would totally cheat and give you the number exactly and be like, deal with it. But uh, I don't have that number for you, unfortunately. I'll tell you after the game, though. We will get that one. But Rux is still trying to split. Impactful is now sent as a defender 
Hey. Hon honestly, there's no armor at all on Rux. This is actually a fairly easy fight, I think, for Impactful. Both sides have swept 16 wards uh -oh. as it stands right now, and they're rotating top. Vision game, once again, comes down, and St. Vicious puts that ward in. Chris is going to look for a flank here. Ooh, can he get it? Same for Mancloud, actually. Rux trying to make his way in, but of course has to respect all the plays. Bunny Fufu could land that one death hook that lets Chris Academy in on this game and maybe even gives them Baron. And you can see Coast immediately back off. They are so respectful of Curse Academy's ability to pick them off. That Coast are playing very safe, very far back. And, you can see and the relying on their late game. Sweeper not available, so that ward gets to live for a day. It's shaking right now. It's so scary. Do we cheer when they like die of old age? Oh. oh. No. The ward lived a good long no. life of three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, we boo if they die of old age? No. That's what I heard. <laughs> Pinks are immortal, kind of. That's true. That's true. But they flaunt it. They're not even invisible. They're like, yeah, I can't die. What? Bring it. Did five attack five later. Times? Yeah. Not oh, so well. smart now. Or... Sounds like me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you can't die and then you get hit five times yeah. for being visible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Sheep kills a ward away. Baron back under control of Team Coast. And it feels like the neutral objectives are really heavily the focus of these two teams. Yeah, they've because la last time that these two teams fought each other, the one that had Dragon Control at the start of the game was the one that ended up closing the game out. Mm -hmm. So having objective control is extremely crucial, and they are just going to, you know, you know they watched their previous matchup over again and said, what went wrong? How could we have done that better? And even Coast, because they dropped a game against Curse Academy. Mm -hmm. How could they have closed that match out? How could they have come back? And so they both went back to the drawing board, and this is the answer, is sweeping wards over and over and over again and having more sight stones on the team. And yep, double sight stone per team, triple sweeper per team as well. I'm looking at the mini-map, and I don't see actually a ton of pink wards just right now. Not they anymore. Keep, yeah, they keep, well, they keep dying of not old age, but violence, <laughs> assault, and battery. It's never the answer. It is for pink wards. Except for pinks, yeah. That's always the answer, then. They can just replace it. Ooh. Wow. Golden Glue, he lost vision so much he had to check with the ultimate. That is actually an important Bunny spell down. Is. The hook lands on a sheep, they and the there pick. goes Man Cloud. Sheep goes down, one for zero. Curse of Academy, what can you do with this? Wow, Dragon is live, but they are looking at that mid lane. They have a minion wave that they have to clear out. And so Coast are going to rush down Dragon for this one. This should go down rather rapidly. Mash can't find a place to shoot it from. They He's need, too low level. They need Rux to auto-attack this. It's not going to go down fast enough. Saint's already in the pit. And it's going to be Curse Academy claiming Dragon after all. Pink Ward goes down. Let's get the Dragon for ourselves. Sheep, unfortunately, caught by the hook. He got it last dragon. time with a spear, but not this time. This time Saint's in the pit. He's no, he knows how to smite. <laughs> yeah, this time. Man. So now... 1,000 gold difference. Again, Curse Academy, get a pick with a flash hook from Bunny Fufu onto Sheep. Mm -hmm. You can't give this guy Thresh. You, you really, really just can. can't. He's going to make those picks for his team every time. It's pretty much without fail. That's why when he was in the LCS, he was getting these types of picks on LCS players yeah. all the time. Darren Ryder was a scary champ for him. And it's worth keeping in mind that Impactful is getting the better end of these traits as well. He's gotten three of the six kills on his team. Of course, three assists, nice as well, but I edged on Trinity Force there. The makings of a Last Whisper coming up soon. Santorin killing wards before they could live for three minutes. They're just baby. He was so young. I know. No. That one's old though. You know, it's it's his time. Bye, Pink Ward. Man. Everybody's just cheering for the death of these wards. I just realized something. I want a timer on a pink ward just to know how long it lasted. So you have this like badge how of shame when you kill a pink ward and you're like, that was in my base for like 18 minutes. Yeah. And you're just like sad when you kill the ward. That sometimes happens when people place wards by enemy red buff up in the uh, the top side of it. I just realized something. What did you realize? You just realized something a second ago. There was something else. Around. Wards don't have souls. Oh, because... Thresh doesn't get a soul. Wards oh. don't have souls. Therefore, everybody can cheer for them and not yeah. feel bad. It's not a bad thing. Don't worry. We're okay. They're inanimate <laughs> objects. They don't even have feelings. You know who does have feelings? These two teams. Yes, they do. And Rox is feeling like he wants to push the bottom lane. But you can see his matchup. I feel like it's dwindling against Chris here. Ryan wow. has weathered the storm. 309 CS. There's Seraph's done. Banshee's on as well.
I have to say, if you were in the LCS audience earlier today and you went home, you are missing out on all these ward cheers. I know, this right? is one of the bloodiest games in terms of ward kills we've seen. This is like CLG E or WE all over again. Ah, that's where it all started. That's where it all started. And we are continuing the tradition here, man. Wards for days going down. I'm surprised we're not seeing more sweepers, but I guess Rux and Chris just want to battle all the time. Yeah, because they need to be able to split push and have their sides covered. Well, then that depends on item slots. Can you ward for yourself? Do you need potions? Do you need the next item completion? Right now, they are relying on the yellow trinkets for that, but... All right. When we saw Balls play in Italy, he was actually investing really heavily in stacks of wards as he came around the map. All right, so we're going to yes, keep him. tabs of things <laughs> for a second here because we haven't looked at the items in a while. Zonia's oh. Hourglass completed for Man Cloud, so he can go really hard and not be punished for it immediately. He can bait the, the enemy turret. team into a bad turret. position. Curse Academy just evened up the gold with that turret. There you go. Another spike here. Chris, Rod of Ages is stacked completely up. He now has his Seraph's Embrace, a Banshee's Veil to deal with Nidalee's damage, and he's building a chain vest so he can be. Uh oh, Gordon Cloud! He oh! goes down! Right away by Man Cloud! Again, the cocoons, the CC is landing, and Curse Academy find another pick. That pick was so fast. And the fact that they had ward control of that area is what allowed that to happen. What are they going to get for this? They're continuing to go. Some damage on a mash, first of all, in the mid lane pressure as well. Oh, Rux is in Rux City right now, pushing top. Population one right now, maybe two as Chris shows up to de defend that. But a tier 2 turret went down despite a kill going to Curse Academy. That is a better thing for Coast here back in the tiniest of gold leads. Control over Baron still something that Curse Academy has, except for this one ward watching them all recall. Wow. That ward was like 20 seconds old. Yeah. <laughs> that poor thing. So Man Cloud has been getting a lot of picks here with the help of his charm and Bunny Foo Foo at the same time. Mm -hmm. Santorin, he's going to counter jungle, he's going to get this blue for himself but it's just these tiny little edges that you need over your opponent. Yeah. Steal that away, Man Cloud's not going to have as many Spirit Rushes. The one thing I'm kind of concerned of with Four Coasts is I feel like they're not pushing their farm onto MASH enough. I feel like a game like this, where you're having a really hard time playing around the river, playing around the vision game, you just say, screw it, let's just siege something, and you give your AD carry an item lead and just say, go. And MASH with the Bloodthirst will help him stay alive in fights like this. But you get to that last whisper point where you kill the front line immediately. And you like win the game off of mass sieging and peeling for him. I wonder how much gold has been generated this game by killing wards. Like 8 million. Yeah. It's a lot. And right now, speaking of wards, Curse Academy has complete vision of this pit. And they ignited. are starting. Coast are just going to go down the mid lane. They don't want to get picked off again. They've done that song and dance before. The river spells death for the team. No, they turn around midway through, but Baron's already gone. Coast, they can just go up the mid lane, get a turret for themselves. Curse Academy forced to recall to defend what they can, but they will lose a turret for this Baron. Wow, so that's going to be the trade that they go for. The gold, 400 in favor of Curse Academy and temporary combat stats on them. A brilliant play to go and use. Look at that, three pink wards in the pit. They swept all of it out, and they made sure that that was a safe Baron play. They've been forcing that objective as much as they possibly can, and with the picks from Man Cloud and just mm -hmm. the potential of them happening, gave them that Baron. Absolutely beautiful, Curse Academy. They played it slow, they played it smart, they played it with the Vision game, and they got in because of it. So, Curse Academy now in control of the game. Look at the inventory for Curse Academy. Three pink wards just sitting there for them. And now Coast, they're trying to make a pick now. Don't know if it's going to happen, though. There's no reason for Curse Academy to be this, on, this side of the map when they could just push mid instead of going for the Dragon, which is up in eight seconds. Well, Ziggs is going to clear away the mid lane for now, but top lane already the target of attention of Curse Academy. Coast will stay for a Dragon at cost of their blue buff and probably top tier two, so uh, not necessarily the best thing for Coast right now. Chris is basically freezing and free farming the right-hand side lane. This is really big. They saw the origin point of where the Ziggs ultimate came from when it landed, so they can go to the opposite side and start pushing top. Look at that. This is a dead turret then, Curse Academy. Maintain the lead, Chris free farming with teleport up, so no real uh, threat for him, because Coast don't have exactly great team fight engage. The slow siege game actually not too hard for them. Ooh, Curse Academy looking for picks as much as they possibly can. Their war control has been really good this game. I talked about it early on, that when you are the pick team, you need to have ward control over your opponents in all areas of the map. Establish ward control with pinks, with your yellows, 
with your greens, mm -hmm. and then also sweep the vision out so you can make plays like they just did. And look at that, like clockwork, the turrets are going down. Coast had finally gotten all six outside the base turrets down, but Curse Academy about to equal that mark right here. One, two, and now three, as Chris has finally pushed that lane down to the turret. Coast, I don't know if they can really defend this. Yeah, they need Golden Glue in the right position to clear the wave, but it's going to be another turret going down in favor of Curse Academy. And now they're even in turrets, even in kills. And Curse Academy, though, doing a better job with the neutral objectives, though. So look at that. A first blood off the Bunny Fufu -fu hook set the stage. Coast found a couple of really good fights, found their way back into the game. But pick after pick into Baron control put Curse Academy back into the lead here. If they can take their time on a recall. Full health, full items, and go for it again. It really just has been the picks over and over again here for Curse Academy, playing to their win conditions perfectly this game. Mm -hmm. And a big thing is they haven't had a five-on-five -five team fight in a long time. Well, they don't want one. I don't even think Man Cloud's used his Zonias this game. No. That's how, that's how little he's been at risk this game. He goes in, charm, picks somebody off, and he's out. Doesn't have to pop that item. And now, Chris, another power spike here. This Rise hasn't seen a lot of action this game, but that's exactly what you want as a Rise. He just completed his Frozen Heart, and he's yeah. about to build his last item. People are hitting six items already. Yeah, just think about what happened to the end game top lane matchup. Rux was winning early. He got a gank from Santor and got a kill, was crushing the matchup, pushing the turrets down. Chris has found a way to vastly outfarm Rux. He went from down 20 to 30 minions to up 60, basically. Ah, oh, it's a war graveyard! Oh no! Ah, I killed his brother. And down they go. So Curse Academy got a couple of turrets off of this Baron buff, but it's pretty close to expiring at this point. But the thing is, that set them up for a lead, though. They're up yeah. 2k. Now, to win a game, I don't think you can play picks forever. Baron itself is only worth 1,500 gold. That is a very slow way to win a gold lead, especially when you're practically end game builds regardless. So at a certain point, Coast don't have to leave their base. Neither team has to do anything aside from defend or push turrets down. So I wonder what Curse can do when they have to group up and they have to face the enemy team of Coast. Yeah, we'll have to see. Sheep now has his Mikhail's Crucible, so we can get rid of a hook and make sure that doesn't happen. He can also get rid of a charm. But, you know, somebody could get blown up still in that time, but they're just going to continue to clear these waves out. Can Curse Academy crack the base? That's what? a big question here. It's really hard. They don't have a lot of wave clear available. It's really just Missile Barrage. That's true, and that's a bit of a weakness then. Ooh. Rux taking some damage from Mancloud, wants Can to fight, though. Mancloud tries to cut him away, forces the flash, one hit from Deb, but can't land another spell. Rux stays alive, but loses the summon spell for it. Chris now taking some damage. Santorin, two levels down on Chris right now. Everybody hitting those level 18s, except for the junglers and the supports. It's a really late game coming in here. That is a quick kill on the white here. It is really late game coming in. That one's dead. Huh? Yeah! Wow. There have been a lot of dead wards. Yes, this game. there have been a lot of wards killed this game. Uh oh. He's found it! Oh no, uh -oh. out! Oh, he died. What if you had to name every ward? Johnny! Johnny, no! And Billy! No! <sighs> Billy has also fallen. He was so young! Why are they male? Well, see, the pink wards are female. Oh, that's cute. People are buying Buy. sheep. <laughs> I somehow blame you for this. Good. <laughs> I like this stuff. That's the, that's the thing. This is like my kind of cast. <laughs> Everyone's just trolling all the time. Uh, I love you guys. Everybody's such a bad influence. Great influence. <laughs> Great influence. I guess it is perspective. Darn right it is. Curse Academy, 40 seconds early to Baron, but that's to set up ward control. And the wards go down. Still 2,000 gold. Pink wards on Baron. Few more in the inventories. Wow. Chris in a battle against Rux. Can Rux win this battle? I don't really think so. I think he's past that point where he could actually take this home. Well, he bought a Randwins, so like he's not even... He's 3,000 gold basically not spent on defending or dam dealing damage to Chris. You can see how that matchup works when that happens here. 
Yep. St. Vicious looking for the flank around. If he can get around and make a cocoon happen. Well, Rux is coming in, or Chris is coming in right now. He's he's going to be in the flank sooner than Rux will be. Can they get the cocoon? Santorin, oh, Santorin jukes yeah, into, it. into it. The hook's going to land as well. And here comes the fight. Santorin goes down. St. Vicious sure to follow. No, he repels into the air. Can he get away from the Ziggs bombs? In comes Smash. Finds the kill. Hook on a Rux. Battle begins even farther. And impactful is one hit away from dead, but nothing can reach him. But Coast deal enough damage that they are into the base. They're going to crack the base. They might get an inhibitor off of this, too. Oh my gosh, 50 seconds of St. Vicious, Impactful is still healing, and Bunny Foo Foo is low. The inhib goes down, and there's maybe a Baron or a Dragon to repeat to. Just the late game prowess here of this team composition that Coast brought to the table. Santorin didn't want to get Cocoon. He eats it anyway, and they trade junglers. And if they don't trade inhibitors equally, that one just went to Coast right here. And as the neutrals respawn, Mash and Sheep will claim this. The Dragon will go quickly to Team Coast. They're putting the gold back in their favor as Rux also takes control of the Baron Pit. Yeah, he puts a ward down too for good measure because Curse Academy, they love these sneaky, sneaky Barons. We're going to see here Santorin. He jukes backwards, but he goes back into it. He gets hooked. He gets healed, but then he drops. And just so much damage from Golden Glue comes in onto St. Vicious. Then Mash comes in. Slams him into the wall to pick up the kill, and they get Bunny Foo Foo low and Impactful. So they both have to back, which gives them an inhibitor turret and an inhibitor. And there we go. Team Coast back in the smallest of leads. Santorin doesn't see any wards there. Wins Fine. Anyway, he's Lee Sin. Yeah. Same oh. Joke. Got you. Fist bump for that. Yeah. Man Cloud, though, removes away a ward for himself. There we go. That found it. Wow. 28 wards swept on the side of Coast. 30 for Curse Academy. That is, again, before Pink Ward, so even higher numbers there. Baron going down rather quickly, though. Curse Academy. Santori. Oh, yeah, below half. Santori so goes in. Mancloud low on HP. There's his own buff. And Santori gets the Baron, and here we go. One, two, all those three have fallen. Mancloud gets out, but the health bars are so darn Mash low. Mash flashes in. He finds one. Gets the McHales. Gets he the jumps. QSS. Impactful kills him. She puts a bubble down, but he's got no damage left. Impactful to carry oh. the team. Gets a triple kill. The Only man left oh, alive. Golden. But there's Golden Glue for the ace, and it's a 2v zero in the base and the Baron fight is gonna seal the deal. Team Coast gonna take game one. Not only did Santorin steal it, they come up huge on the aftermath and Coast break the game wide open over Curse Academy to take game one. What a victory there. Nail biting came back and forth the whole way. The fearlessness of the AD carries was the big standout to me. A great smite, of course, by Santorin, but you still had the entire Curse Academy team inside the Baron Pit against a Ziggs. That is a scary place to be. And you can see on their faces there, nobody really too happy or super displeased with that, because Curse Academy put up a really good fight there, and then yeah. Coast was a little sloppy by them, but they played their win conditions and didn't let the poke, or I guess the pick, the pick. happen in the late game. Yeah. And it's got to be hard when you've lost like 50 wards. That doesn't count pink wards revealing or pink wards dying. Those don't get swept. So you've put so much vision down throughout the game, trying desperately to not get hooked from the fog of war, not get charmed from the fog of war. And then you just got to be like, you know what? This time, you just got to face check the Baron. Yep. Just got to try. I hope it works out. It did. And it did. It completely worked out for him. Curse Academy swept 30 wards that game. Coast, Acad uh, Coast Academy. Coast swept 28. That's before pink wards killing other wards off of the pink. That's ridiculous. There's so yep. many wards. Everybody's say, like being finding Nemo right now. Wards? 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 <laughs> hey, man. And of course, you heard the cheers every time. You guys did not miss a single ward kill at home. Our observers are on that one. Thankfully, we do have multiple observers. One guy looks ahead a little bit. Oh, uh, well, I guess uh, not necessarily looks ahead. No, they use magic. They use magic. They use magic to, to find out when the wards die. Um, but a secondary observer is like, hey, by the way, bot lane's about to be swept. Brings the primary observer over to show the ward death. Why are you giving away secrets, man? Look, okay. Just let it, just let you ruin the magic. Let him have the magic. No, I'm just saying that, <laughs> that we at, at the League of Legends Championship Series and the Challenger Series try very hard to bring you all the ward kills. Okay, there, there we that go. That you can be part of there the we experience. Go. There we go. Yeah, I was against the cheering for ward kills beforehand, but I'm actually on board now. Yeah, because you realize. Halfway through the game, I was like, there's a ton of wards going down. Yeah. 
Because people won't shut up about cheering for him when they die. <laughs> and it's worth it, man. A, a controlled game. Unfortunately, Curse Academy let it slip away. Coast, come back at the right time with a great team fight to close the game out. A well-done game. But we're going to send it over to the Dash and the guys at the Analyst Test to break down that victory by Team Coast. Thanks, Freak. I'm James Dash Patterson, and alongside me are Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler and Joshua Jack <laughs> Leesman to do a little bit of analysis on this best of three series that we got going here. I like this, though. The salutes are coming yeah. through. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the <clears throat> fact that this game stalled out. Oh, yeah. Is that a product of the land setting being new to the arena, or what's going on there? I think that's a product of one team having Tristana and trying to control the game yeah. so that they can take advantage. Corky, everybody knows, much earlier power price, power spike than Tristana. And they're the ones that had the split pushing uh, composition here. They got there nidally ahead early. Santorin had a really nice gank up top to make sure that Rux would be that split pushing threat. And then they kept the pressure for long enough until MASH just got out of control. Yeah, and I mean, we knew that these were 80 carry focused teams which is the strangest thing. And when you have one guy who's playing Trist and another guy who's playing Corky and the game gets really late and still close, the guy playing Tristan is probably going to win the game as long as he doesn't get caught up by that ambush. Yeah. Uh, that being said, it was a great uh, ambush team here for uh, Curse Academy. They pulled it off several times, setting up those ambushes around the objectives, as they should. Very good uh, vision control. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at an example of that. We'll go 19 minutes into the game around uh, the Dragon Pit where Curse Academy actually sets up a nice pick to go with the comp that they had set up. So we're going to pull this up onto your screen here. And uh, Kobe, I'll let you walk us through it. All right, let's see here. This is uh, one of the ambushes. Uh, looks like they got Coast on the run. Let's roll this one through. Yeah, Man Cloud runs even through the mines because they have a teleport coming in back. Ryze actually draws half the team away. And Saint with the flash cocoon does hit into the charm. So the whole point of the ambush comp they're trying to stack those skill shot CCs on the first target that they do hit. And they end up going uh, two for one in that. Yeah. Uh, it technically gave them control around Dragon, but since Saint was dead, we saw what happened there. They didn't actually secure the objective after they made the successful kill. And a lot of what Curse Academy was trying to do was kind of like search and destroy, find the right targets yeah. to go and get kills in. But honestly, they couldn't close the game. There was a few really unfortunate things, you know, the spear taking the Dragon down. Saint was not there, very clearly, uh, but that was a big thing that could have helped them win the game. The random Baron check by the Nami and then Curse Academy not really staying on the Baron, that could have been an early ga game gamut by them. Like This was an incredibly close game and could easily lead to a three-game series. And a big reason why it was so close, especially, we got to give shout-outs to Bunny Fufu on that thresh. He was a key component of setting up a lot of those kills. Well, yeah, he was catching a lot of people out, as we said, is the point of the comp that they built. <laughs> but when we look at these two teams, both teams regard their 80 carries as, their, as the carries for the team, mm -hmm. right? They put a lot of weight on their shoulders. So why do you pick Corky, then, into a Tristana? You want to end the game much earlier. Yeah, I think it has to do with just 80 carries, uh, Lucian being gone, obviously, if you're not... Playing Kog'Maw, the other guys have Trist, you kind of have to pick your poison. Do you go with Jinx, who's kind of the same thing, but a bit of a downgrade from what Tristana can bring? Or do you just try and win the game earlier? And it's not like Curse Academy wasn't close to doing so. I think that's why they did the Corky. Well, let's talk a little bit about then how Coast actually came out with the win. Because we have to give them some credit for stalling out the game. Yeah. Let's look at their, uh, their composition. What are the factors that played into being able to stall it out as long as they did? <laughs> Zix is one really big thing. <laughs> the easy answer here. Yeah. That's the classic thing you need when you're stalling out a composition. He did get uh, ambushed many times when he was roaming around the map by good cocoons from St. Vicious, even though his KDA wasn't there. He had some really solid cocoons, good charms, and good hooks. Well, that was the point I was going to make. You have these great wave clear champions. However, they're really susceptible to picks. So is that just vision control there to make sure that you can avoid as many of those picks as you, as you can? Yeah, we spent a long time on vision control this game. <laughs> Maybe a little too much time. Now, the thing that I really want to harp on, though, in the mid-game, like really early on, Saint, he dies to get that deep ward, and they see two members backing. They mm -hmm. almost have this perfect, sneaky little Baron here for Curse Academy, but they all back off because they see Nami, and they don't have enough vision around to see where the rest of the team is. But having seen two members go back already, you kind of hope that they just finish off that Baron. It was pretty low, around like 3,000 maybe. Yeah, Nami wasn't going to so steal close. that. So close. 
No, absolutely not. Yeah, it is unfortunate. It's very they dangerous. Didn't, they didn't. Yeah, they didn't realize that Nami was the only person in the vicinity. There was no steel that was going to come through. But let's take a look at a Baron fight and a Baron uh, secure that did happen at the end of the game. Forty-six minutes. The one that closed it out. Jat, if you don't mind walking us through this one. This was desperation, plain and simple. Because remember, Curse Academy had already lost a 5v5 at the foot of their base, and it was very clear that uh, that uh, Impactful was not at the same level of or as mash me as far as AD carry. Let's just roll this clip right here because they're five in the pit against a Ziggs. The bomb hits almost everyone. They do not have the ability to get close to Rux. It's stolen away to add insult to injury, but that wouldn't have mattered because they're getting pretty much aced anyway. And actually, if Mash decides not to rocket jump here, he would have killed Impactful just fine, but they ended up having some backup with Ziggs. Uh, flashing in while Impactful is trying to make it back into base. That's okay. Golden Glue's got his back. Uh, you can see it back there. Yeah. <laughs> There's an ace. It happened. Well, given that this is a best of three series, what are the adjustments that Curse Academy needs to make going into the second game, being on blue side, in order to come out with the win? I think it might have to do with uh, bands targeted around AD carries, uh, if it is going to go longer, because yep. they're very clearly is this top tier, uh, the upper echelon of... Kogma and Tristana right now, who, by the way, are not bad in lane phase anymore. Both of them got these mana taken away from their uh, most important abilities, the W for Kogma and the rapid fire from Tristana. And both of them, right now on this current patch, I think we're uh, still yeah, on 412. Yeah, we're on 412 here. right now. Yeah, 4-12 here. Both of them are very strong in lane as well. And it's a crazy thing. There is some counterplay to it. I think it's what Curse Academy needs to do. Ban one, hopefully late in the banning phase, so that they have to either ban the other or give it to them. And if they ban the other, then hopefully get something cool like Cassidy. All right, well, we'll see what these two teams come back with in the second game. Thanks, guys, for giving those us those tidbits of information. Our team, however, is pinging us for a commercial break. But when we return, it's game two between Curse Academy and Team Coast with first place for the Summer Series 2 on the line. You won't want to miss it. This girl. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. They know about this. The Q to the thing for the kick out of Magma. Oh! Knocks up Saint. There's a whole bunch of explosions and Curse Academy. Suddenly he realized they oh! stepped onto a ward. A great lantern oh, does not does. save Saint Vicious. There's a knockback oh, of Magma. Golden. Golden Glue just goes down though after burning all of his spells. But Saint is low. He will go down. And Centaur gets the Baron. And here we go. One, two, all those three have fallen. Mancloud gets out with the health bars are so darn Mask low. Mastery flashes in. He finds one. Gets the McHales. Gets he the QSS. Impactful kill. Kills him!